49 by Kennedy Sir Beckley. There is the field. And Bernard Lagarde has got his hand full here. Cam Levins is a strong runner, the Canadian, a Canadian Olympian. Evan Jager, of course, a fabulous steeplechaser, but great flat strength and speed as well. Bernard Lagarde there shaking hands with uh, Cam Levins, the trading partner of Mo Farah and Galen Rupp over in Portland. He's been in this situation so many, over a dozen times. You know, and he's staggering. such an exciting runner. You know, I love watching him race. He always finds a way to really get the crowd excited. Uh, and and, and in, anytime you do that, you're going to become a crowd favorite very, very quickly. And he's definitely been that over the last few years. Well, we know he's in good pay, in shape, uh, Bernard Legat. He ran 7.38 in Germany a couple of weeks ago. He was fourth there, but he did spend about uh, four weeks back in uh, November, December time with flu. He was really very ill for three or four weeks, and that ate into his training. So he's come into this indoor season a little bit backed off where he'd really like to be. But we are expecting a quick pace today here, Brian. Uh, 58 for the first 400 metres is what's been uh, requested by Pat McGregor, the pacemaker. And that's going to set up for a really good time, so it's going to be interesting to see it. Look Looks like they're going out with the pacemakers and, and they're going to be right there. So this should be very, very exciting come, you know, two laps from now. Well, McGregor it is who's leading from uh, Bernard Lagat, Andrew, Andrew Bumbelow in third, and Cam Levins in fourth in the all-black strip. Evan Jager with that long flowing hair and the headbands in sixth place. Unmistakable is Evan Jager, who uh, is one of those steeplechasers who has got real quality, real class on the flat, and that's why he's so strong. He finished fifth in the uh, World Championships. 59-41 through the, the first 400. Well, that's a little bit on the slow side, it really is. We were looking for about 58, and uh, McGregor needs to turn it on a little bit here. It's quick enough, well, quickish, with a single file, a clear indication of that. You don't want to be running wide with these tight indoor bends, but McGregor really needs to be striding out now and getting away from this field, or at least trying to pull away with this field, because they're down on the schedule that was requested. You know, but Bernard looks like he's okay with the pace that's going out right now. He's sitting right behind him, letting, letting him do all the work. It doesn't look like he's pushing him to, to take off any faster. So, you know, that could have been something that was changed up as they were talking right before the race. Well, Bernard Lagat in second place. There's the ultimate uh, strategic runner. He's a wonderful tactician. Still, he is in second place from McGregor. Bumbelow, Levins, and Hooling now has moved through into fifth place. There's uh, been no change, really, since the start of this race. As they plow around this, they're on just under the five minute tempo 159 zero about two seconds off uh, that pace that they were talking about 157 pace i'm sure they all think it's quite quick enough especially if they pick it up bernard legat has, has a devastatingly quick finish yeah don't let don't let the 39 year old you know <laughs> don't man fool you. you here he's he definitely can finish a race that is for sure well i think people forget that bernard legat is i think the third fastest 1500 meter runner in history he's got astonishing speed endurance and great strength too he's uh he's broken the us 5000 record indoors in the last couple of years but it's still mcgregor leading little glance over his shoulder there he needs to start moving along legat in second bumbelow Levens hooling there, and Jager still with that headband back in what a uh, seventh place at the moment. Sixth place is uh, Jager, but nobody really pushing it hard or aggressive, even though the pace is not much inside 30 seconds per lap. Yeah, I mean they're they're coming coming down to you know four laps here. I mean they're going to have to start making their moves very very quickly. Well, it hasn't been quick so far, but I'll tell you who is the quickest finisher of all these men, and it's Bernard Legat. And therefore, with, what, two and a half laps to go, I think it's a mistake for they're these large the guys to be sitting in behind yeah, them. they're giving the race away right now, you know. He's controlling this pace. Nobody's pressing him. Nobody's making him have to run their game. And, and Bernard Legat's comfortable in doing that. He knows exactly what he has left in the tank at the end of this race. His tactics are, are quite perfect here, really, if he wants to win this race rather than produce a first time, because no not only have they got to accelerate to make up that meter on him uh, from second place there as uh, Andrew Bumbelow, but in these tight bends, you've got to run the extra meters too. And you can utilize those bends to your benefit. Right. You can leverage them as a tactical uh, tool in effect. You know, and maybe, just maybe, these guys respect him a little too much. You know, I mean, he's, he's the veteran here. He's older than everybody by almost 10 years. So maybe the youngins just don't think they have it in them to beat him. And that's why they're falling behind and, and letting him take the pace. Well, the gaps are appearing. And just like that wise old head would dictate, he's beginning to wind it up here in this penultimate lap. It's Bernard Legat. Bumbelo in second place. Levin's there in third. But he's calling the shots. And the problem they've got now is that he's gradually accelerating. He's turning the screw. So to get past him, Brian, you've got to make a double injection. Exactly. You've got to not only increase your speed, but remember,
Piper to get around him, you actually have to run further. Well, Cam Levins there moves past Bumbleo onto the shoulder of Legat, but Legat again goes into that penultimate bend, into the back straight. He's a lovely looking runner, yeah, isn't he? Up on his toes. He's quite majestic the way he covers and, the ground. And you're not going to pass him on this turn. You know, because you have to run further. He knows it. Look at Legat just turned on right now. He's going to win this race. He wants this win. He came into the straight, into the last lap with about a two-meter lead. He wins it with a four-meter lead there. And the winning time there, 4.54 for Bernhard Legat. It is a new American best for 2,000 meters. Ten laps of the indoor track. Steve Scott with a hand-time performance running 4.58, way, way back in the 80s. Bernard Legat there winning that one, frankly, at a canter for my mind. He had plenty in the tank, and the others have just got to show more tactical that racing now. So they want to beat him. Yeah, that was just perfection. He's been here too many times. He wasn't going to allow some young kid come up and, and, and take that away from him. Well, what puzzles me, there's the grandson of Pavo Nurmi, the uh, starter of that race, Mika. It's a very nice moment right there, you know? Oh, isn't it? Isn't it just? It's finished blue. But here they are. Approaching the bell and uh, Bernard Legat in control, Brian. And Frank, the race was over a couple of laps out because they were not, he was not going to relinquish that lead. No, and I can't imagine that anybody would think that they could outkick him. You know, I, I don't know what people were thinking there, but you know, when you wait that long on an athlete like Bernard Legat, it's you've given up, you know, you've given up the race. Well, Bernard is a very, very astute racer. He's a, got such a wily old head in his shoulders. He's been looking up the big screens as well around the stadium to utilize that information. Look how far, how quickly they've drawn away from Bumbleo there. Right. To uh, get yeah, the That first, was great closing spot. speed. And look at Legat just pull away. You know, I mean, he just pulls away from the guy like he's walking. I mean, it, it was just perfection in motion. It was, it, it's so amazing and so much fun to watch him run. That, work, that uh, American best of Steve Scott was 33 years old. It was in 1981. Bernard Legat, 454-74, winning comfortably from Levins and Torrance.